That's the feeling we've all had. Now new shoes would make you glad, but the best time you recall when you wore no shoes at all. Back the day. All right, well, Banjo's crunching on her food, so there might be a little bit of background noise, but um, I'm headed to the dairy. It's the first step in cheese making. I'm making feta cheese this week, and uh, usually I just use these uh, six gallon buckets to haul the milk from the dairy to here, and I'll just sign out one of our DRBC vehicles, the DR Vehicle Co-op, and uh, make a trip to the dairy, which is only about, I think it's about a mile and a half down the road. So it doesn't take long, uh, but it's a little too much to ride on my bike because it's two uh, six gallon buckets for this batch. I'm probably gonna make about 10 gallons worth of feta cheese, which ends up being about 15 pounds of feta cheese. And it's cow's milk feta. Often feta cheese is made with uh, sheep's milk or goat's milk and uh, I don't have those so I make it out of cow's milk. We are very fortunate to have Banjo, you're making so much noise. <laughs> we are fortunate enough to have this dairy down the road that sells organic uh, raw milk for three fifty a gallon and you can just go over there and fill up and so that's what I get and I make kind of a big batch of cheese at a time so that it's more efficient. So this is our Passat. It's one of our vehicle co-op vehicles. I'm gonna si sign that out, so I'm gonna bring it along and uh, take these buckets and fill them up with milk. Yeah, so we'll just load it up and head to the dairy. I hate it when the days get so short that I go to the dairy and it's already dark. It's only like 6.30 or something, and it's already dark, which means winter is coming, and I don't like winter. This is the dairy we're coming up on here. It's the Zimmerman's Dairy, a Mennonite family. Oop, and there's a dog over there. Gotta watch out for that. Okay, I'm gonna shut it off so I can back in. All right, I filled them up somehow. <laughs> so we're ready to put the lids back on and pay for it and get out of here. This milk was fresh from the cows just this evening because they get this thing emptied pretty much uh, every day. It's a small dairy and this is all the milk that they get in a day. I'm a professor of psychology and philosophy at the University of California in Berkeley. Well, it's kind of a gloomy day, and it's pretty much a perfect day to make cheese and be inside. So we're going to take that milk that we got last night, and the first step in making the feta cheese is to heat up the milk. And because I do a large volume of milk and cheese at a time when I do cheese making so that it's just more efficient, I usually heat up the milk uh, by doing it in portions and because I don't have a vat that's big enough to hold 10 gallons of milk I heat up a small portion of it and add it to the rest of the milk and because I'm only heating it up to about 90 degrees It's pretty easy to do that. It would be a lot harder if I was heating it up to like 180 or something, but um, But this seems to work really well, and it doesn't take very long All right, so I'm gonna go through these basic ingredients and tools for cheese making for this feta. 
And uh, first of all is this thermometer, which I've found very useful and is pretty uh, vital in cheese making because you always want to know uh, the temperature that you're shooting for and you're uh, heating up your milk. This one in particular is really good quality. I don't know what it was originally uh, made for, but I got it online and it was a relatively affordable and it seems to be really good quality. I was surprised because I got another brand um, and it pretty much busted the second that I got it. And this one has held up over many years and it only takes a few batteries, uh, small like watch batteries, and they seem to last more than a year. So you don't have to replace the batteries very often. This is just a little screen for scooping off anything that might fall on the surface of the milk while I'm heating it up. And then a half cup measure for measuring out the rennet. And then we can look at the ingredients here. For feta, you're gonna need a mesophilic starter. And I get my starters and my cheese making ingredients from New England cheese making supply because they have these slightly larger amounts. And if you're doing something like homesteading and you want to make larger amounts of cheese to put in your freezer, uh, this is a great way to do it cheaply because you can, uh, you know, this says it will set up, up to 250 gallons. If you're making uh, your cheese with raw milk, you get a much better uh, yield out of this amount of starter. So I think you can get about twice as much, and I don't know if the 250 gallons is for raw milk or if that's for the pasteurized milk, but it goes twice as far if you're using raw milk because the raw milk has a lot of um, its own natural bacteria in it that basically are the same thing as the mesophilic starter. This is lipase, which you can also buy at cheese making supply stores. And um, cow's milk doesn't have the same qualities as goat's milk does, which is a more traditional way to make feta. And so you add this lipase and it basically will allow the, it's an enzyme that allows the uh, cow's milk to sort of change and develop some of the qualities of goat's milk. Um, it has a little bit more of the goaty flavor and it uh, also makes the, the cheese white instead of like a yellowish color. And then we have, of course, rennet, which is a ingredient in most cheeses. And this is the coagulant. And this stuff that I use for these fresh cheeses is this vegetable-based rennet that you can buy and also in large amounts. And I just uh, sort of measure out a smaller amount and fill up this little bottle for my cheese making every time it runs low. All right, well this is plenty hot, so it's ready to dump into the rest of the milk. Perfect, and ended up at exactly 90. So this MM100 mesophilic starter that I use for the feta says that uh, a half a teaspoon will set approximately six to 12 gallons. So I'll use about a quarter of a teaspoon for this. Stir it up. I should explain a little bit this Jacket here is an insulator that I made out of warm windows fabric the same stuff that I used to make the thermal curtains on my house I had some leftover and so I thought I'd make this jacket and it holds the heat in uh, To maintain the temperature on this because this has to sit for about 45 minutes for the initial step so that that culture can sort of replicate and multiply in here and spread throughout the milk and so I'll just put this lid on 
and that will should maintain a temperature of about 90 for like 45 minutes until the next step, which is adding the rennet. All right, so in the next video, we're going to be continuing the process of making this feta cheese, and we'll go on to uh, adding the rennet and setting the curd and some other stuff. And so if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.